Hey folks, I'm Nick Rivera with the uh, Horseman's University. I'm down here in sunny Florida with Jake Bierenbaum from Pear Tree Ranch. Uh, we're just going to do a little, uh, little behind the scenes uh, Horseman's highlight interview here just to kind of give you an idea of um, who Jake is as a person, how he kind of got into horsemanship and, and uh, the inspiration behind everything. Um, Thanks for doing this interview. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So, so how did you get started with this? I mean, were you always into horses? Was it was it something that you kind of fell into, or? Um, from what I've been told, my first word was horse, and I didn't, I wouldn't say it out loud. It was like a whisper. My parents talk about. Uh, my dad works at Michigan State. Hey, Sandy, saddle. Hey, saddle. Hey, girl. Yeah, Daddy's Helper, come to help. Um, my dad works at Michigan State University, and when he would drive from where he worked at uh, the horticulture department uh, to home, we would pass the MSU horse facility, and the horses were in the field. And even though I was little and couldn't see out of the car, um, they said that I would know every time, and then I would in the back from the back seat go horse, 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 because they had stopped there in the past and taken me out to visit and see the horses when they were along the fence. I guess this is what my parents share with me. So um, one, I think it's funny that I would whisper it and not actually just full on say it. And two, to, that it was horse is pretty cool because fast forward, um, I rode very young. I remember my grandfather, my mom's dad, putting me on a horse. I have memory of that. Um, not really strong, pretty blurry, but I remember him putting my, me on a horse and the horse being rather than hanging on. Oh, and he's kind of running next to me trying to hang on and, you know, keep me on there. I, and that's what I remember of it. And then I don't really remember sitting on a horse again until high school. Now, fast forward even further into my early to almost mid-20s, um, I, yeah, sorry, early 20s, I started dating a girl, and she said, oh, do you want to, I have horses, do you want to see my horses? I like horses. <laughs> yeah. So I went to the barn, and they showed me, they're like, we did this thing, and it's called Pirelli. We do the seven games, and we do the seven. And I'm like, holy crap, I've never seen anything like that. And that was like a lot fast but that was really different and so because of that and because of um you know my relationship with her i, I went and saw probably tour stop and thought man this is fantastic what they're doing these horses and it's natural and the horses want to be there and want to be a part of things and um, I had at the time been studying for a few years uh, a guy named Tom Brown Jr. And Tom Brown wrote a book called The Tracker. And he's written like 17 or more different books. Uh, Wilderness Survival Field Guides and um, story books that kind of tell his life story and his journey studying wilderness skills and um, kind of the philosophy of the earth and his time with a man he called Grandfather. And so I went and studied in New Jersey with... Tom Brown and um, even lived there for a time in the woods in a stick and leaf hut and um, through that I could see the parallels between learning to get along with nature and learning to get along with a horse and it made sense to me mm -hmm. and I kind of always said man one day I'm going to take some time and learn this horse thing and mm -hmm. really learn it I, I always loved them and I always thought they were amazing and I always had a draw to them but I, I didn't realize that it was like something I could choose to take on it yeah. sounds kind of funny but it was just kind of the reality of it I, it's like oh well you're supposed to go to school and you're supposed to go to college and you're supposed to get a job I just they didn't draw me hard I wasn't around it enough to to have that happen yeah. but as soon as I was around them it was like that and yeah. so was horses horsemanship training horses developing horses was that your first career path or was it something like you gave something else a shot and so and it, I did a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in a daycare. I worked in the toddler room, one to two and a half. And I've worked as a carpenter, uh, framing houses and working for my uncle doing that. I worked as a cashier in a, a grocery store. I worked as a landscaper, learning to do custom brick patios and retaining walls and doing all the mowing and the weed whacking. Mm -hmm. And... Um, 
I built greenhouses and worked on um, some organic farms. Uh, so you had a lot of other I had a lot of other before, experience yeah. before horses, okay. and if anything, that kind of helped me know how to do a lot of the other jobs that it takes when you own horses there's a couple ways you can do it and one of them is you can have them at home so we're sitting at home here in florida my home and i see my horse there my wife's horse there my wife's horse there i got training horses there and i can we're looking out from my classroom at the beauty of pear tree ranch and it's like they're all here and it's like there's a fence that i built and there's a fence that i fixed and there's a gate that i hung and there's another fence i built and there's that yeah so it's almost like all of those, all jobs, of those jobs like shaped you to be able to do all this stuff yeah. that you have to instead of that's really special you can pay somebody else mm -hmm. if you've got money to do all those things and um, or you can pay somebody else to take care of your horse and take care of all the place where you just show up for an hour and visit with your horse and rub them and love them and bring them and ride them and put them away. There's nothing wrong with that either. And there's nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> this That's, wasn't your calling. That just wasn't my, that wasn't where I ended up and that wasn't my calling. I learned to do all the things and was in a position that it, it kind of happened that I, I've just been a part of usually running and operating my own my own place or someone else's place that they said here use it like it's yours and take care of it or i you know paid the lease on the place and and did that and so I, it's it was a different kind of experience but because of all the other life that i've lived before i got into horses a bit later so i wasn't then full-time studying horsemanship horse development and horse management until my mid-20s i started working in 2007 for um pirelli natural horsemanship and i was um 24 mm -hmm. and in 2008 um i was 25 I remember because George Strait's uh, Troubadour song came out, and I learned to play the guitar that night. I remember getting that song, and in the beginning of the song, he says, I still feel 25 most of the time, and I was kind of, ha-ha, funny, see, I am 25. Uh, so uh, that was my mid-20s, and I was still just kind of starting to ride and, and learn um, right then. So so, so obviously, you know, you've, you've had a, a connection with um, working with Pirelli in mm -hmm. the past. Um Definitely part of part of the influences that you know affect your horsemanship and everything is. Is there anybody else? Is there any? Are there any other influences that um, you you pull from? Because it's not you know you, you've made your own brand. You've made your own. I mean, this, this place is is uh, centric to Jake Birnbaum's method of training. Right. Who else have you pulled from? Um, you know, to to uh, accomplish what you've accomplished. So. Pirelli was kind of my intro and what drew me into just because of um, the people that I was around to horsemanship and realizing that that was like a thing that people studied and did versus, oh, you just got on and ride horses. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, as I studied him and who did he learn from, I realized the importance of Ray Hunt, the mm -hmm. importance of Tom Dorrance yep. and all of the guys that they have educated I mean, Tom and Ray, it, it, everything almost boils back to those guys. Almost everybody you can trace what they learn if they're really successful nowadays in horses back to those guys. In the kind of natural horsemanship or the study of horsemanship versus um, sport horse training, right. you know, where it's a discipline, it goes back to those guys. And um, so I, I, you know, I've studied and read and watched videos on those guys. And I've seen Ray in person a couple of times before he died mm -hmm. and um, got to meet him. And that was a super cool experience. And the, the couple of times that that got to happen. And then, um, you know, I've tried to really study all the other guys that they help teach. And so you got Pat Pirelli, but then there's also Buck Brannemans and you got your Martin Blacks and um, or some of the guys that I really like reading about and, and studying. I, I like their style. They each carry something a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, but they're kind of in the same age age group a bit as each other that the, they were all kind of coming up at the similar time. And they're guys that I've been able to um, – Not I haven't really been around Buck, but um, – I try to read everything he's ever, you know, put out and all the videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, life just hasn't really set me up um, yeah. to to go there. But it's it's on my list. I mean, I, I respect what he's doing very much. Yeah. And 
um, that I've ridden with Martin numerous times and spent time around him and yeah. And, and he kind of helped me. I like just learning to try to think like these guys think mm-hmm. and see what they're seeing. And then you got to make your own choice because of who you are and what's important to you. Right. And uh, that's what then starts to make us all different. You make choices based on what someone else says you should do. Mm-hmm. You're not actually thinking for yourself. I mean, I'll even tell a horse when I'm working with them. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I might say, you can't do this, this, and this. I need you to make a good choice. Right. Then and um, Yeah, I mean, you say a lot in your videos, there's the... There's the good option, then there's the not so good option. Yeah. You know? um, so, so you've mentioned a lot of a lot of guys that are that are really uh, heavy into the into the Western world. That must be something that's passionate for you. Um, what would you say is your favorite part of, of you know when you when you think about it, if you had the ideal day of going out and, and riding a horse? What would you be doing? Would it be jumping things? Would it be chasing things, roping things? Um. For me, something that really kind of lights me up is seeing someone or something learn. And I realized this, um, one, working at a daycare and being around, you know, small children, one to two and a half, that it's like you would do something and they would learn it and they would just like, now that was a part of them. And that was like, wow, that was special. Yeah. And same thing while I was with Tom Brown and I would, was a kind of volunteer instructor there for a lot of different courses and to help people learn and achieve something. I had one woman, one woman was there and she's learning how to make fire by rubbing sticks together and it, she's ready to just quit and she's in tears. And I looked at her and I'm like, I'm not quitting. You don't see me leaving. I said, I don't know why you're stopping. I'm still here. Let's go. You can do this, and I'm here with you, and I'll be here. Let's do just try. You can try again. Just because it doesn't work that time doesn't mean it won't get it the next time. Let's go. And she went, and she went, and she and she got it. And and so there's this little coal. You this up with a bow drill, and it's there. And so then you have to take that coal and put it in a bundle of tinder and blow on it. And she's crying. <laughs> and it bursts into flames. And she, and she like drops this fire. And now she like jumps on top of me. And she's hugging me and crying. Thank you. And it was like, wow, what an experience. Yeah. Months later, that lady sent a card to the school there, hoping it would find me. And in, in the card, she explained, because after she finished, she was doing it in the bow part that has the string that wraps around the spindle and you have a handhold and the spindle goes in the fireboard and makes the friction. She was using a bow that wasn't a bow. It was a straight person's a bow. And so I said, here, here's mine. Use mine. And she used it. I said, there, that's mine. You can take that home. And now you got, no, you got one that works and you did it. And that like meant the world to her. And for me, it was just a stick with a piece of string on it. Right. I'd make another one easy but it meant a lot to her and the time that I took with her meant a lot and so she wrote in this card and I still have the card and yeah. Yeah, this was a long you know a lot of years ago more than 15 years ago probably and she said you have no idea what that did for me and what I've been through this year and that little bit of time that you took has helped change my whole life and I want you to have this gift as a thank you and there was this fixed blade knife with an antler handle on it and she said somebody very special to me made this and I want you to have it and what I she didn't say in that but what the other instructors at the school said is her husband had passed away um Mm. in that year and he had made that knife wow and I have it it's still on the house I can show it to you and it's I carry that for a long time you'll see if you see me ride in my riding shafts there's an empty sheath on the back of it because I had a new sheath made and it's not quite right so the knife would fall out so the balance I have it just in a special place but I carried that for a long time when I would ride to remind me of that story and why I teach and why I help horses because the littlest thing you can do in someone's life can change everything and it might be that you change a whole horse's life by just you might have to hold a firm line and say you don't get to act that way but you don't have to do anything i'm not going to make you do anything and when they can realize that that's okay and that someone is there for them while they make a choice of something appropriate to do Mm -hmm. 
that they just and the same for a person and when you can just be that rock for them and be there and you give them something that changes their whole life that's super special and that fire that lit me up is if i could just do that once a week i would be a holy crap mm -hmm. and i mean i get to do that every day basically yeah. with the horses that are here the students that come um those aha moments it's that aha moments that we would call it for making fire when the tinder bundle goes mm -hmm. off and bursts into flame yeah. they kind of have that light bulb moment yeah. that really just gets me going and it's not about actually doing anything as much as I love um, swinging a rope after some cows and following cattle around and having a job to do and me and my good horse or a young horse that doesn't know learning to be a good horse getting a job done and moving some cattle around or going here going there and that's just that's a good day but um so you're you're not uh you're not alone here on the on the ranch um you've got a wonderful wife stephanie um yep. and uh, a baby boy baby johnny yep baby johnny so how has how has that i mean he's about he's almost two now almost two, two in march it's december now <clears throat> a few days away from christmas so how has that i mean having a child starting a family is, is life-changing enough not not at least to say you know starting all of this and building all of this but how has starting a family and having a baby how has that affected your horsemanship has it affected your horsemanship does it make you look at things differently yeah yeah it, yes and no so there, yes because I, i'm always reevaluating reevaluating now with johnny you know choices that i make and things that i do because of just safety like if i choose something that could be dangerous to me mm -hmm. or dangerous to him down the road uh that ain't happening I, I take that super serious like it's a very scary thing it's almost like teaching horses has kind of helped your father father you know exactly <laughs> and so uh, i was lucky enough my parents are really special and they taught me a lot about parenting and um, how to how to be around other people and uh, especially around around kids. So I've been interested in raising kids and having kids since I was little. Mm -hmm. That letter that you write to yourself when you're in like you know middle school or fifth grade, and then you get it when you're a senior and you're graduating, and you read it, and it's like this is what I want to be when I grow up, and you kind of compare. Mine said, I want to run a daycare one day and take care of babies and do stuff. And it was like, I, I kind of do that. I take care of baby horses and, right, right. and or, uh, you know, I, I educate. That's, that's a similar type thing. And so, um, you know, always been that way, but now actually having him and he's mine, it's that much more real about, um, it's not a negative thing, but you start to live your life in fear of anything happening to them or yourself so you can't take care of them and it's not a bad thing that's nature making sure that you right. stay right and um it, it's just been a wow experience and to then be somebody that there's not a lot that has scared me in my life and that i've been afraid of and I'm able to be in and maintain good confidence to then have to handle that every day mm -hmm. like keep it in check it helps me understand you know students that show up and are just afraid of these 1200 pound animals you know 1200 pound squirrels on four legs <laughs> um, yeah. and how do you do that and so it, it just makes me understand people better having Johnny it makes me um, able to really Kind of showcase and have something to refer to this is why I, sp I speak to horses the way that i do and, and i don't just mean speak to them with my mouth but try to present ideas to them in, in communication so that it's not any different than how i try to speak to baby johnny and it's a, it's a pretty neat thing to be able to show people and um, it's a great experience to, to do that for and with horses and as well as him i mean i say the greatest thing I ever did in my life was marrying my wife because I couldn't have the next greatest thing in my life, baby Johnny, without her. And uh, it's just a heck of an experience. So. Well, there you have it. A little bit of uh, behind the scenes with Jake. Jake, thank you very much. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Thank you guys for being a part of Horseman's You and allowing us to do this for and with you. 
Uh, if you want to hear more about our other trainers, a little bit behind the scenes, um, keep an eye out for the next uh, Horseman's Highlight. If you want to get more updates about what's coming up, different videos, stuff like that, you can sign up for our email list. We'll keep you posted and updated. Uh, if there's anything that you would like to know uh, from Jake or from any of our other trainers, uh, just let us know. We can include it in the next interview. Or if you want a specific uh, topic covered on horsemanship, equipment, anything like that, uh, just let us know and, and stay tuned for that.